A number of veterans organizations are trying to create what they call a bill of rights for American veterans, guaranteeing them the best care, treatment, and support possible. Joining us from the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America founder and executive director Paul Rykoff and spokeswoman Carolyn Schaffer, both veterans of the war in Iraq. So break us down for what, what is this Bill of Rights? The Bill of Rights is really about making veterans issues a priority in America. With the election coming up, with Veterans Day coming up, it's about demanding that veterans get the proper care and resources they need. It's focused on mental health issues, uh, ending homelessness among veterans, and providing compensation uh, for folks who are extended beyond their duty. But everybody says, look, you know, we care about the vets, they get the best care. Is that not true? I mean, what, what, need, what more needs to be done? Oh, we, we need to do better mental health care screening. We need to fully fund the VA. The GI Bill that just went through this year, that's a good step. And we need to involve every American. You know, there are a lot of other issues like Lindsay Lohan and, and the pop culture that tend to bubble up. And now the economy is a big story. We've got to remember that veterans need to be a priority all the time, not just on Veterans Day. Presidential candidates, politicians, everyone needs to get involved and focus on our issues. PTSD is, is a huge issue. Uh, I know it's an issue you, you've dealt with yourself. What? What, what, what more can be done? I mean, you talked about mental health screening. Is, is, does everyone not receive that already? No, they don't. Um, we need to, we're trying to get it before people deploy and at least 90 days out from returning because PTSD takes a while to manifest usually. And that's what happened to me. It was about six months in and I realized, you know what, I'm just not quite right and I need a little help. So we need the VA to reach out to veterans. And for a lot of service members, especially those still in uniform, it's a very hard thing. I mean, there's still a stigma associated with, with depression or, or mental health issues. Yeah, there's a huge stigma. I mean, that's a major barrier. There's the military culture of being tough, of being macho. But we're trying to explain to people that it's not about being tough or being macho. It's about taking care of yourself, just like you would with a shrapnel wound or an amputation. You've got to get treatment. You've got to deal with it and understand that it's a normal reaction to combat. It's, it's, a, it's an injury that's associated with your service, and PTSD is something that can be treated. There are resources there. We need more of them, but we need folks to step forward and understand it's a normal part of serving in combat in a very tough situation. When, when, a lot of times when you go to homeless shelters for, you know, for stories, as I do, or, or, or for work, uh, you see a lot of vets from the war in, in, in Vietnam in particular. Are we seeing a level of homelessness now among vets returning from, from Iraq or from Afghanistan? Yes, we certainly are. We're seeing an increasing level, and that's result of PTSD. The sooner we can get that treated, the less homelessness we'll have. And we're also working on getting a voucher program for the homeless. What, what's the voucher program? Basically providing more housing for veterans. There's a serious shortage of housing for homeless veterans. There are around 200,000 homeless veterans right now in America of all generations. A lot of them are Vietnam vets, but an increasing number of Iraq and Afghanistan vets. There aren't enough transitional services in place, educational programs, and transitional housing. There's no transitional housing. You could be literally in Baghdad one week and in Brooklyn the next. Is it easier, you think, for these vets returning now I mean, the, 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 than it was even from vets from the, the first Gulf War? Or, I mean, how have things changed? I think, personally, things have been getting a lot better since Walter Reed. Uh, I live in D.C., and things changed almost immediately once that came out. So the uh, Veterans Affairs is trying every day, but it can always be better. Do you feel like, I mean, I talked to a lot of vets who say that, you know, and, and if people still serving, they'll say, like, it doesn't feel like a lot of the country is as engaged in the war. I mean, many young Americans, which we talked about in this program, know people who have served or are serving in Iraq or Afghanistan, but it doesn't feel like there, there's a level of sacrifice, certainly not the kind of sacrifice that the troops' families are. No, that's exactly right. There's a huge disconnect. It's one of the biggest challenges we face as a new generation of veterans. Less than one half of one percent of the American public has served in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's a very small percentage. And World War II is about 12 percent. So that's why events like this are important. Raising awareness, getting musicians involved, getting news networks involved, and bringing together. We're going to have 900 of our members here from all over the area that are coming together to have a good time, to listen to some music, but also to rem remind people that veterans are issues are something everybody can get involved in. It's not just somebody else's problem. It's a problem all of us can get together on as a nation. Uh, thanks so much for what you're doing. I appreciate you being with us tonight. What, what's your website if people want more information? IAVA.org or just Google IAVA and you'll find us. All right. Well, thanks so much. You can also go to chooseorlose.com or our website, ac360.com, for all the information.